Okay, and there we have VLA. And inside, we have a visitor center of sorts. It's a little dated. Um, in fact, it's a lot dated. Now, this thing operates, I mean, obviously we can see in the visible range here. The VLA operates mostly in the meter to millimeter range. Now, that has advantages and disadvantages. First of all, they show you different things. Visible light tends to show you things that are fairly hot. Ultraviolet, really hot. X-ray, really hot. So that gets hotter as you go that way. It's cooler as you get this way. So you see cooler things in the radio waves. They are also, you, you can penetrate different regions. So, for instance, visible light is dispersed by things of comparable size to the light, which is, you know, tens of nanometers, tens to hundreds of nanometers. However, that is completely invisible to radio waves. So these things are very good at looking to the inside of dust clouds. And also radio waves are, of course, clouds are completely transparent to radio waves, whereas they block out visible. So this thing can operate, VLA can operate, well, any radio telescope, when it's completely clouded over. Now, another interesting thing about radio astronomy is just how new it is, in that you know, this is the sort of first radio telescopes in the 1930s. And then it, you know, Dodger Bank was the first sort of serious attempt to uh, at radio astronomy. Uh, yeah, big budget style. But the thing you'll notice about the design is it weighs an absolute ton. People haven't figured out how to make the dishes yet, and only a few years later they're into these Sororia truss type designs. Much lighter, much cheaper to build. However, you still run into this problem that, you know, Jodrell Bank was 250 foot. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's getting pretty near the limit of the size you can make these things. Now, the, the, the general idea is the bigger the dish, the more photons you get, and that's better. And also, the bigger the dish, the better resolution you have. And well, with because there's a limit to the size you can make these things, it, it, it's actually a sort of uh, ratio of the diameter of the dish to the wavelength you're looking at. So let's say Jodrell Bank is 80 meters and it's looking at a uh, 1 meter wavelength. That means that you only get 80 wavelengths of the light that you're looking at across the dish. Where if you compare that to the eye, the exit pupil of the eye is about, you know, half a millimeter. And you're looking at wavelengths of, yeah, hundreds of nanometers. So your eye would provide much better resolution of the sky in the visible than that would in the infra, um, infrared in the radio waves. Now there's a trick you can pull called interferometry. And there's a light, light, light funny stuff. If you just have three telescopes like this and you take an image from this one, an image from this one, and an image from this one, you don't actually gain any resolution. You just get a brighter image because you've gained three times as many photons. However, if you actually correlate the signals that you're getting from all three, then you get an effective aperture of this this size. But you, you need to know the time that the photons the time the photons are arriving at each specific location. So that it, it gets you three times the brightness of the image, because you get three times as many photons, but it gets you a huge increase in effective aperture. And these are this is the first of the array type telescopes. And that brings us on to the VLA, the very large array, which is 27 uh, dishes, which can be spread out, which increases the, it, it narrows the field, but increases the resolution, uh, or, or, or brought in together, which widens the field, but lowers the resolution. And yeah, this was a big budget. This was the first real big budget. This was uh, tens of millions of dollars. But the amazing thing about all this is how the various bits of technology has changed. And just as uh, over a few years, the 
the design of the dishes changed, the electronics of this place have changed beyond recognition. So it was started in 1972, <laughs> and you know what computers were like in 1972. It was finished about 1982, and then they started this thing called the Very Large Baseline Array, which is basically you take scopes from all over the country, or all over the world is more common now, and each one, you need, you need the precise time that you're getting your photons, so all this was, you, you needed your atomic clocks. All of this predates GPS, bear in mind. This would be trivial to do today with GPS. But just to give you an idea of, of how these things date, it's super fast tape recorders pack as much information on two-fifths of an inch of tape as your PC does on its entire floppy disk. Its central p computer can perform... 750 billion multiplications per second, which is probably about the um, speed of your average netbook these days. So, I mean, all this has changed completely now. Of course, this is just out of date. But, and yeah, so they, they initially were all done with uh, waveguides and the such like, and they've now got fiber optics in there. This one's kind of cute. So they got their little fiber optics there pulsing away. And yeah, this laser flashes at five hertz. It's five times a second. Each flash is a tenth of a second, twelve channels, ten gigabytes per second. Roughly four hundred and fifty copies of War and Peace could be transmitted in each flash. So yeah, I mean, the, 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 this this place is a real. Uh, this place is scientifically up to speed. Um, yeah, with their new antenna or new receiver designs but some of the some of their posters are uh, a little antiquated but it's amazing how the technology has changed that made this all possible yeah so initially people needed a method of detecting x -ray, um, radio waves so all this was right at the start when people couldn't even really detect x-rays then they had to work out how to build big dishes then they had to work out how to correlate the signals from these things the interferometers and you know the, each of these is a technological challenge and then building a, an, a facility of this size is again a sort of triumph of, of technology and then keeping it up to date updating it is sensible with modern electronics and computing.